Welcome back to the 3 of 7 podcast. If you don't know what 3 of 7 project is, it's a podcast and it's a training company. <laughs> yeah, that's I heard you tell somebody that the most recent description. You know, but people are seriously we we don't market anything. And what we haven't had to. Well, everything that we do is set with such small teams. So we we're not trying to get, you know, thousands and thousands of people. So I really think that there are people who listen to the podcast who aren't really sure exactly what three of seven project is. <laughs> yeah. That's why I was putting that out there. There could be. If you were one of those people, you now know not only are you listening to a podcast, but you're listening to a podcast put on by a company that does training also. <laughs> so that gives you a little more insight into. Well, you know, I made a post the other day and I said, I, I gave you, I gave you guys the formula. What the crap? Uh, I made a post the other day. I gave you guys the form formula. I said, no amount of tips, running tips, can get you to this point. As long as you believe a shortcut exists, you will never win. I achieved this level that I'm on right now, which is not the highest level achievable, by the way. I still have growth left um, in my life, much of it. But I achieved this level by showing up, shutting up, paying attention, and doing the work. And Here's the thing. First of all, you got to have somewhere to show up to. Then you got to decide to shut up. Then you got to have somebody that, uh, uh, an instructor or somebody that is a good teacher that's worth paying attention to. And then you got to do the work. So I've, I've literally dedicated this entire portion of my life to training people, to building experiences that you can show up to and if you so choose to pay attention and put in the work, you will come out the other end a better, stronger, more mentally tough, more prepared human being. That's what I've dedicated my whole life to right now. And... I think that's the part that most people have trouble with is the showing up part. They don't know they don't know where I was just talking to Chile a minute ago. They're not if you want to go somewhere and improve your body, your soul, and your spirit, your physical body, your mind, your will, your emotions, and your your spirit. If you want to do that, if you want to show up to a training evolution that's going to hit all that. Where are you going to go? What are you going to sign up for? There's really not a lot out there. And that's why we do what we do. And so we do that and through a couple different missions. The basic course, the Proving Grounds, which is this weekend. The Proving Grounds, let me, let me try to sum this up for you. The Proving Grounds is a mission where we essentially take all the things that we teach and talk about and we teach and talk about them and then we facilitate an environment and a mission where we can prove to you and you can prove to yourself that those things actually work. That's, that's what it's essentially all about. And now we have advanced training missions where if you graduate the basic course or the proving grounds, I have planned and we have actually executed last year one advanced training mission. This year we have two. Three. Oh, well, two, two different missions. Yeah, two different missions that are l like legitimately not that the, the basic course and the proving grounds will challenge you, but these advanced missions are like, two more levels up. I guess legitimate, uh, whatever you want to call it. 
danger involved in these things. You have to you have to be wired tight, right? And that's what three seven project is. Just figured I'd let y'all know. What was that freaking story you were telling about when you hissed at that snake, Chili? Chili's back, by the way. All you guys, I, you guys have been complaining on Instagram that Chili hasn't been on the podcast. Well, he's back. What's up, Chili? <laughs> yeah, I was just uh, about to say something. I forgot what it was, but I, I hissed at a snake. You were trying to make a point. Well, yeah. Well, it may have been a point he didn't want to make on the podcast. Well, it's it's. I'll tell you what the point it was. The reason I'm not going to say it on the podcast is because it was a it was a strategic point that I wanted to share with you, with the team here. Oh, not the general public. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Chad it, don't realize sometimes <laughs> some things just don't go on the podcast. Well, yeah. It's th- this is this would be more of a. Remember, okay, here's a story. Remember when uh, we story, were at, story time with Chili. <laughs> remember when we were at uh, the the last advanced mission, the first advanced mission. Yeah, and the, and those people asked, "What? Wh- hey, what are y'all doing?" And I looked at them and I said, "It's a special operation. Yeah. Don't worry <laughs> about it." <laughs> Boy, <laughs> then they really wanted to get into our business. Where, where was that at? That that was um at the first advanced mission. Yeah, that was where that that was at the base, uh, right there at the base of, uh, uh, of oh, the mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we started, yeah, them two sad sacks <laughs> walked up, and of course, anytime you're doing anything, people want to people want to come up and and ask you all the details of of who you are, where you came from, what are you doing, how far are you going, where are you camping. That's just how hikers and 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 outdoors people are. And um, if you want to call them that. Well, yeah, these people. And, and Chili just looks up at these cats and says, oh, we have a special operation going on here. Um, don't worry about it. <laughs> and I was like, boy, that's really what you want to tell somebody yeah. when, when you want them to get out of your freaking business. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let was... me give you just enough to pique your interest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That wasn't real smart, but. And so then we, we started we start our, our climb off and the whole first half of that day is just getting up into the alpine environment. And when I say up, it's up. And remember, we kept leapfrogging with them jokers, and finally oh, yeah. they quit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had on Jansport backpacks and big bottles of Mountain Dew. And they was headed to the top. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, uh, yeah, they told us that where they were where they were headed to. And we knew what it was like up there. And uh, after a, a, a few times of, of passing them on the trail, I had come to the conclusion, if they actually are dumb enough to go where they said they're going, there will be a medevac helicopter <laughs> called in to rescue these cats yeah. tonight, without yeah. a doubt. Well, yeah, I mean, there, y- you can climb. And 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 do whatever, you you can do that. How they were dressed and with the gear they had, but they couldn't. No, <laughs> it's possible, but for old cut off with the Jansport backpack, how? No, he wasn't going to do it. it. It would it would have been a disaster if they would have kept <laughs> going. Absolute disaster. Well, we got to do some team PT this morning. You know, that was nice. It's nice to get the team back together. Um, Coach Krista started full-time with the team uh, here, I guess, a few days ago. So this was our first uh, team PT with Coach Krista. And you guys will get to hear more from her probably on the next podcast next week. Um, and if you're coming to the Proving Grounds, and if you were at the Proving Grounds last year, Coach Krista was there. But if you're coming this go-around, you'll get to spend some time with her there and get to know her better. So we're really excited about that. And she's pretty secretive, too. Uh, she's not – she don't have Instagram or nothing, so she'll be oh, yeah. kind of like Chili, unreachable. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, But 
of course, Blake wanted to go to CrossFit this morning. Oh, whatever. Me and Chad hunted yesterday, and we were driving out, and I said, what do you want to do tomorrow? And he said, you know, I'm about sick of this winter crap, man. It's too cold. I don't even want to get up and run. I'm not running tomorrow. It's too cold. And I'm tired of this viral blizzard going around here. He said, I'm just going to the gym tomorrow. It, and, like, there was just arbitrarily, then, then there's no Team PT. We'll probably record a podcast. And then Chili's handicap is that he can't do, it's his kryptonite. He can't do, uh, as Chad says, oh, no, never mind. I was going to say Team PT. <laughs> But he can't do CrossFit for Team PT. And, Says uh, who? So Chad decides since we're an equal opportunity employer, we decide to accommodate Chili's handicap and go <laughs> run. But that's how that went. That's just unnecessary I shots was, <laughs> at me. <laughs> I wasn't even going to go to the CrossFit gym. So I was actually just not even going to PT this morning. <laughs> oh, well, that's pretty much your modus operandi. Yep. SOP. That's my SOP. Um, I'm glad we went and ran though, man. The beautiful morning. There is never an instance where it wouldn't have been better if you ran. Like I if, agree. if you did something else, it'd have been better if you ran. No. I agree. If you run, you're happy you did. I mean, I'm happy I didn't do anything. I don't do it unless I'm going to be happy about it. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to have, I want to have some conversation for the people, Chili brought up a really great point a minute ago, and I want to discuss it. And this is a struggle that I found my own, my own self in here recently, and probably you have too. How do you, how do you manage the? How would you say this? How do you manage? The time that you spend studying, uh, worrying about, being concerned with the things that are happening in, in the nation right now, all the bad things, right? All the crazy things that we always, that we've talked about, that you hear everybody complain about, that you see all over social media all the time. How do you balance that, or should you balance that, with good things in life, things that you actually enjoy and find enjoyment in? Because Chili was basically making the point that if you stay focused on all the stuff that's happening, all the bad things that are happening, essentially it will consume you and destroy you and just, you know, just just make you walk ar- walking around angry all the time. Have any of you guys listened to this? Do any of you guys struggle with that? I know I've found myself in places mentally over the last year, especially where I just become all consumed with the stupidity of what is happening. Um, so how do you get out of that? And how do you balance that? That's the question. Yeah. Chili brought it up. Well, Let me just read this to you. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Yeah. Well, that's what we were talking about. That's, you know, that's the the answer to not being consumed by all the things that Chad brought up is to focus on what you just read. Uh, but then I, I feel that there's uh, something lacking when you do that. It, when, you, when you ignore the, the things that you know, when you willfully ignore the things that you know may be happening or, well, I said the word no and then may, <laughs> there's things that you really think are, are coming. Mm-hmm. And and I think if you willfully ignore those things, then you can't complain when they happen and they come take over your nation, world, whatever. And, and 
you're destroyed by them, you know, because you, you willfully ignored them. Now, if someone has no idea, no concept of this, then that's whatever. But willful, willful ignorance of those things will result in them happening. Mm-hmm. You know, if people continue to act like the things in this country aren't happening, well, then it's going to really slap them in the face at some point. And if it don't slap them in the face, it's going to slap their kids in the face. Well, um, you could argue that what I just read, whatever is noble and right, is it yeah. noble and right to recognize a problem yeah. and plan for it? That's also so true. people can't, you can't read that and say that, oh, well, it, it um, that means if it's, they get hung up on the end, right? If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Well, that knowing that there's a problem is not necessarily excellent or praiseworthy because there's a problem. But recognizing it, I think it's the light that you look at it in. If you look at it and then you're just, you know, down and out and beating yourself up and worrying about what is potentially to come, then, yeah, that's not right. But to recognize something for what it is so that you can plan for it to combat it in the future when it comes around, I think that's noble and right. Well, I get in places where thinking about this stuff makes me miserable too. I mean, it it does. But – I, I think you have to have a reason for looking at it in the first place and trying to be informed. And and my reason is because I genuinely believe, you would say have hope, that that something can be done about it. I think if you don't I think if you sit there and look at all that and don't think that anything can be done and it's just coming and your life is about to turn into hell and well then yeah, you'd you'd be you'd stay miserable twenty four seven. Yeah. But I'd and I'm not just hope is a weird thing too, because ultimately I think this world will end bad. <laughs> you know, so you don't have hope that that it's that there's going to be utopia on Earth, like we're going to be able to solve all these problems. And but I'm not really even choosing to have it. I just think that we can, if you if people knew everything that was coming, you could actually do something to stop it. Uh, so that would be my hope and reason to, to look at it at all. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know the, the, the balance between looking at these things because it, it's like a negativity loop. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's how you look at things and, and what you expect to maybe come out of your efforts to combat them or, that gets people aggravated or I don't know, but I do not get very worked up. I mean, I I realized problems. I do what I can to fix them. And, but I honestly, I don't get like that worked up or stressed or been out of shape about the things that are going on. I, I just think that when it's time to act and people are ready to band together and act on whatever it is, I'm not talking about an America or Mm -hmm. whatever the problem is. It could be as small as our team at three of seven project. If there's a problem until we decide that it's bad enough to band together and do something, I, I mean, I just don't pay it that much attention because it it's undue attention that you're giving it and you're creating undue stress for yourself because it's not time to act because everybody's not ready to act. So until there's actually something to be done, I think you should recognize it. I think you should have some kind of plan in place and talk about it. But to get worked up and bent out of shape about it because it's not happening yet or the efforts you've put in have not yielded the results that you expected they would. I mean, I don't I don't know that that's what that's how I feel about it. I'll get worked up and passionate about things when it's time to go do them in that moment. And before that, it's all worthy to pay it attention and to plan and to look at things. But the emotions that come out of that of stress and worry, I mean, they're wrong anyways, but to get that way that early on before it's even time, I think it's kind of, I think the other side of what you're saying is when you, when you wait till that point, then it's too late to effectively do anything about it. I think that's, I mean, that's the only counter to that really. But you can still put in the work up to that point. But what I'm saying is don't be so worried, so to speak, about it in the on the front end until it's time to act. I would and say, then you've got a plan, I mean, because you've thought about it. I mean, I'm not necessarily worried as much as I'm just 
it's like you sit there and rack your brain trying to figure out what can be done now, you know, and I'm not, I'm not concerned with just trying to make people think how I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care about that. I mean, and you know, there's people who think that what we say is, is coming or, or is potentially coming and, and the, the, the state of affairs. You don't even have to talk about what's coming. You can talk yeah. about what's here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, there's people that don't think it's, people don't see what is going on, how we see it. I mean, to say it's here, some people would deny that what we say is here is here. I mean, and I don't, I'm not trying to convince them of that, but in a way you are because you're trying to get them on board to help you combat it, you know. But the, the I mean, people don't see the agenda we talk about behind what's, what's here. People don't think it, that it's nefarious. People don't think it's malevolent. They don't. I mean, I, I can't convince them of that, but still, there's something in me. There's this pull that tries to figure out how how I can push back against it. And I think talking about it is just it just is unsatisfying to me. But I think talking about it is one thing that helps, but it kind of keeps you in that negativity, like you're saying. Yeah. So. Well, I think what I found in in my life over the last year or so, what will happen and and where I cross the the line um, and where this becomes unhealthy, uh, focusing on the stupidity of what is happening, the the evil or whatever it may be, whatever aspect you want to focus on, it's it's a whole concoction of things. Where I cross the line is when my concern about those things or my concern with those things begin to erode my ability uh, or, or my desire to do things that I love doing in life. So, like, I've literally went through, I mean, I've, I, I, I have went through spells where I get so frustrated with what is what is the United States of America, I get so frustrated with it. I just get in the. I, I, it'll get you in a rut to where you don't even have the desire to go out and do the things that you know you love to do in life because you're so consumed with the bull crap that's going on. That that happens, and so that's that's the that's where it crosses the line for me. And I think it's so important for all of us to have a few things in our lives that we are truly passionate about and that we really get enjoyment from. All right? And so I think you have to find a balance between... Those things that you love about life, that you love doing, and also having legitimate concern and care for what is happening around you um, culturally and, and, and having some influence and, and some, you know, some c- concern there. So finding that balance. And, and so me, I love to hunt. I absolutely, uh, it's one of the, one of my lifelong passions is hunting. It's been with me more, way longer than fitness has been. And so I've noticed even just in the past week or so, I've noticed myself becoming consumed (coughs) with the topics of the day. And I've actually intentionally forced myself to go out and hunt because I know I love that even though I didn't feel like doing it because I'm so frustrated I go out and and do something I enjoy and and it's um it like restores me it like it's like a restoration you know And, and I think for me it's hitting that balance and even hitting the balance in like I've struggled with finding a balance in in what I'm going to share 
as far as content wise um, on social media or or even here on the podcast like there has to be a balance there you know what I mean yeah between like good things enjoyable things activities what a hobby passion whatever it may be and then what's going on in the world that's a hard balance to strike yeah you know so for me that's the ultimately that's that's what i am trying to remain aware of that's how you recognize it's became a problem is when it affects you doing the things that you like to do yeah you no longer enjoy life basically Exactly. And I mean, I, I'll even get to a point. I mean, you get, I, I get to a point because I'm a passionate person. I get to a point where I'm so frustrated about what the things that are happening that, you know, I, I, I'll go back and I'll look uh, just at my, my Instagram page, for instance, and I'll be like, dang, um, you know, I, I haven't said, I haven't said anything in a while that would, maybe motivate someone or maybe inspire someone to, to um, it, maybe just to, or, or, or just encourage them in who they are or, or, or what they want to do in life. Like I haven't put out a message like that in quite a while. And, and that's, I think that's not good of me. I think that you can balance the two. Yeah. Yeah. Because Putting out something good in response to something bad that's going on still brings light to the thing that's bad that's going on. Some people, are, I mean, it's good to put out things that you can do. I mean, even just the the flag thing, like that's good to put out the Pledge of Allegiance, the reading the book, but you're doing that to combat the things that are bad that are going on, and so indirectly you're shedding light on something bad versus just sharing an encouraging message that doesn't have anything negative at all tied to it right that's got something negative tied to it as positive as what you put out it's got something negative tied to it yeah yeah you know exactly exactly yep that's been a tough balance to strike over the last year or so it's hard to recognize too because you think, well, this is good. This is good. This is all good stuff. But you don't realize the the negative that's tied to it. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's a, it's a hard balance to strike because you don't – you. I mean, you legitimately believe or think that, that these things are, are coming and are, are, are inevitable without – direct and deliberate action to combat them. At least that's how I think. So selfishly, you just don't want your, your life to turn into that, (laughs) but it's not pure selfishly. I mean, I don't want anybody's to, but I mean, that that's one reason why it's hard is because, you know, the, the, there are people who don't, they think we are complete loony tunes you know, what we think is coming is absolutely crazy. That'll never happen. You're nuts. But, you know, that's not how we see it. So it, what we think is coming bothers us. And it's hard not to try to, at least for me, it's hard not to try to think of ways that you could maybe make it not happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's why it's, it kind of makes your desires wane because you're, it narrows your focus. Yes. Um, but it, it's not good. Exactly. <laughs> it, makes your, it makes your life miserable while it's not in the bad place that you think may be coming. You know, like right now, it's not completely that yet. So you still have the freedom to live a life that's fulfilled. and not, but, but it makes that life miserable. Mm-hmm. Because you're expecting something. You're expecting misery to come down the road. So that makes your now miserable. That doesn't have to be. That's right. It's a very difficult. It's a very difficult thing, and and that's one reason why it, it bothers me that it's been bothering me so bad, because I feel like the freedom that I do have now is being taken away by. It's my fault, but it's being taken away by what might happen. Yeah, you can't worry about the future like that. 
mm-hmm. that's completely counterproductive. And yeah, you know, it's like it's stealing away your life before it has even st- stolen your life. Yeah, it, you know. Yeah, you're giving it power more over power me. than than what it's. I've given it power doing. over me. Yeah, totally. Well, and the difference between us and and specifically Chad is that everybody is in a different place and sees things differently. So for him to put out or us to put out the same message all the time is not what everybody needs. So some people might need that, but it's important for us to be able to recognize there's also other people that, that need, that need uh basic needs and encouragement and whatever else to be able to even get to that point to where they can start worrying about those things. Like, there's people that are in such bad shape, they don't give a crap what's going on in America because <laughs> their own life is so bad that they don't have time to think about that. So for us to not put out content to help that people... Well, and how you're supposed to put out content, let's say, to, to help people is... That's such a tough game anyway. Like, I, I, this one thing, it's a, it's a I guess you would call it a principle that... Jordan Peterson has said that I, I mean, I love it before you go and criticize the world, clean up your room. That's the concept that he says. And people have made fun of it and everything. But if you actually think about what he's saying, what he's saying is before you try to solve the world's problems, make sure you are in order. Yeah. You've got, you're not living some life of sin or whatever. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, I think if we all did that more, it would help us. You know, you can't go and solve the world's problems if your life is a wreck. And your life may not be a wreck, but you could improve. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. I think that's a really, I think that's one way to go about it is is, uh, improve yourself as much as you can to be able to maximize your ability to help others. Yeah, well, yeah, well, that or even impact the things that you're frustrated with culturally. Um, mm-hmm. They, I think, they go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think they do, and I think you you said a, a really, uh, you put it in a really clear way in my mind a minute ago, Chili. You talked about your focus becomes too narrow. Mm-hmm. And so I think that really resonated in my mind is like, okay, let's be, let's be aware and let's broaden our focus and make sure our focus includes those things that we enjoy and that we love about life that feed us as, as individual people, right? So let's make sure that those things remain included in our focus along with these other issues that, yes, we have the responsibility to be aware of and to have conversation around. Yeah. Um, because the other side is completely ignoring it. and Well, then, then, then you're going back to that narrow focus, yeah, right? I mean, so that narrow focus on, on either spectrum of what is important in life is is a, detrimental. A, yeah, it's a, it's a detrimental way to go through life. Yeah. So um I don't know. I've I've just been uh I've been thinking about that and you know, been been thinking about that balance and uh in in terms of in terms of where I've been in scripture, I think kind of applies to the conversation. Uh, I've just been rereading uh, Romans chapter 8 over and over again. <laughs> and one portion of Romans chapter 8 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And, I mean, I think that's applicable uh, to the conversation and one part of the conversation that, that we've left out in, in terms of that narrow focus is also 
your focus has to include the your your spiritual life, your your relationship with God, your your contribution to the Church of Christ, um, the the your ministry, whatever it is, God has called you and your family and and uh, and and your you know your community to do. It's easy, also. We're talking now about fo- f- getting too focused on things of the world, um, personal pleasure, but now we have this other aspect that I think is pointed out clearly here in Romans 8 of also keeping our spiritual mind in focus alongside all those things. Um, they all have to be in focus. Well, I mean, I see this a lot in as far as right and wrong. And like you talked about the narrow focus, narrowly focusing on, for instance, making America better, and that's that's your only focus, is just as wrong as ignoring it all. So there's there's two answers that are wrong, and one seems more right because you feel like you're doing good, but really the answer lies right there in between. And that I mean, it's that way with almost everything. Almost everything. everything there's a, there's one answer that is totally wrong, and you're like, I I can see that that's wrong, so I'm going to do what's right in my mind, and you focus all your energy on what you think is right. But by doing that, you're also doing just as wrong as ignoring the problem. It's like two there's two solutions presented, and they're both wrong and equally well, maybe not equally destructive, but in your own life, probably so. It, and it's like a it's like a seesaw. Whether it's whether it's sitting on the ground because nobody's on it on the right side, it's really no different than when it's sitting on the ground on the left side. They're about the same thing. But when there's t- when there's two kids on it and it's it's pretty much even, then it looks a little bit different, right? So it doesn't really matter which side it's on. There, there, it's both on the ground either way. It's just a different side. But when it's balanced, it's really where it should be. Like that's mm-hmm. well, that's like you said. It's that way with everything. Yeah. I mean, what is right and wrong with stuff pertaining to things like that is not always that clear. Yeah. I mean, like, you, or at least you can think you're all doing the right thing and then basically have more understanding of it and go, mm, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, that's actually not how this should be done. And, and I think, like, with everything, you have to analyze it like that. So for the listeners... I guess this has been a little bit different type of a podcast. I think a, a, a little more of a intellectual conversation than you're used to hearing on the three to seven podcast. You know, I, I guess what I'm what I'm trying to get get across to you guys that are listening to this is, in spite of your concern, your valid concern with what is happening uh, on a day-to-day basis in our nation or in our world, don't forget about the things in life that you love. And don't get to a place where you're so frustrated you're no longer engaging in the activities in life that you love. Uh I myself, I am interested and I am currently, um, I, I guess, building those things back into my life. Um, I love shooting bows. Me and Chili are going to go to town here in just a little bit. We're going to look at getting him a bow. We're going to look at getting some targets. We're going to, I, I want to build, remember how much fun we used to have doing that, man? Yeah. It's like... The th- there's so many things in life that I love that I've found myself uh, becoming more and more detached from. And it, it's it's hurting me. You know, I am who I am because of the culmination of yeah. all of those things. So be intentional about building those things back into your life. And even if you feel like you might get so down and out, you feel like, what you know what, man? What's even the point of me going and running this race? What's even the point in me 
going on this this elk hunt or this deer hunt or what's the point of me doing the things I enjoy? Look at what's happening around me. Don't get to that point, man. You have to balance the, the two and also the third. Don't get to the point where your spiritual life is out of focus. All right? So step back, broaden your focus, re-engage all three of these things, the, th- the things that you love, the things that you have the responsibility to be concerned about, and also your relationship with God. And that that is the message of 3 of 7 Project. That is yeah. what we... That is what we believe has to happen for you to live a complete experience in life. Yeah. Um, we build that into every training mission that we run. We build that into it, but that has to be our life every that, single day. That I mean, that is life. You ask, why? why do you go do those things that you like to do? Because that that's life. That's who you are, and you go do the things you like, and you are those three things, body, soul, and spirit, and everything you do. So if you like to run, then you do that when you're running. If you like to hunt, you do that while you're hunting. And, you know, the things that you like are just who you are. And so that's why you go and do them. Life is not this big, spectacular thing that people try to crack it up to be that, once I get to this point, then life is going to be so awesome. Like, I've got to work. i got to do this. i got to accomplish these goals. And when I get there, life is just, it's like the, the gates are going to open. And it's just going to be this big, spectacular thing. And then you see, oh, man, life's still life. And nothing is more grand than it has ever been. And now I've paid off all my bills. And life is still life. Nothing big happened. You still just go do the things you enjoy to do. And, <laughs> you're chasing fulfillment. Yeah. And and can you be fulfilled if you're not complete? Like you say, you know, you have to have all three in line to live a complete life. It's You can almost replace that word with fulfilled. It's slightly different. But, you know, you're not you, – you can't be – Yeah. You can't chase fulfillment by doing those things. No, and let me tell you, there's a lot of people, because I've been one of them, that chase that not knowing that they're chasing it. I guarantee you there's half the people listening to this podcast think, oh, that's not me. I'm not doing that. I'm living my life. But in the back of your mind, subconsciously, all you're thinking about is, Okay, I'm going to get this week down, and then I'm going to live life on Friday. I'm going to work yeah. all week, and then I'm going to live life on Friday. I can't wait for Friday. Or whenever I get this bonus, I'm going to pay off that credit card. And when I do, then I'm going to live life. But till then, that's what's always in my head. And you've got to really look at yourself. I didn't realize it until I achieved it. And then I realized, oh, well, life is still life. I'm mm-hmm. no more fulfilled now than I was then. And, I mean, it's not like you're off down, a, you know, some kind of bad lane while you're doing it, but you are not as effective as you could be because you are subconsciously, you've made that, conscious or subconsciously, made that decision to start working toward that. And until you get it, that's all, that's the main goal in your head. And when you get there, I'm telling you, it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. Isn't that interesting, though? It takes you most, maybe not all the time, but most of the time, you won't realize it until you do it. Yeah. That's that's funny. Yeah. Like you don't realize it until you do it, and then you can, you, you have the full breadth of knowledge to be able to go, oh, well, this don't do it. Yeah. Interesting. That, that was my goal, was to get financially set so that then I can enjoy life. And I didn't realize that was my goal. But then we have extra at the end of the month. We don't have any debt. And essentially, that's what I wanted. I didn't want like a bunch of money. I just wanted to be set in my mind yeah, to where I have income. It's a little extra. I don't owe a lot. And I get there, and life is still life. So, I mean, I would challenge the, everybody to say, really look at what you're going through, why you're doing it. And 
is it like are you enjoying life along the way that's the problem is that you think you're enjoying life along the way but really you're not because that's always in your mind of oh, i got to go back to work monday and on this you know when friday comes i'll do what i want but you got to be able to live life the 5 days of the week that you're working too and if you can't yeah. do that where you're working you got to go get a different job yeah you can't i mean you you can't gosh if you if you can't live your life five days out of the week because you you're so miserable doing what you're doing and you're looking forward to Friday, five days a week. That's a lot of dang time. Five out of seven days. Mm-hmm. And you probably if if you're that miserable Sunday, you're so miserable about going to work Monday, you probably <laughs> ain't even enjoying nothing but Saturday. Yes, yeah, so you get one day a week, one seventh of your of your life, you're semi happy. So. I don't know. I mean, that kind of went down a rabbit hole off topic, but no, nah, I was perfectly on it because that none of that makes sense without that. I mean, mm. I I mean, I can I, I think every human out there that's listening to this can relate to that. I know I can relate to it in a big way, in a sense of um, my journey to become a seal. I always I I, I lived a big portion of my life where I thought if I if I could ever get to the point where I could pin that trident on my chest, that that was going to be the ultimate fulfillment. I would be set. I'd be set for life, right? The end all be all. The end all, yeah, that was it. And, and, and that is not reality. Mm-hmm. Um, that is just not reality. And yes, you're right. No, I don't think anything, anything that you're that you're chasing is is worth that. No, like any because it's it's not going to deliver. Yep, it's not gonna. It's it's not. There's not. There's not an end all um, fix to fulfillment in life. It it is. You have to find fulfillment in the day to day life. That's it. That is fulfillment. What and you, it's the same with your relationship with Christ. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. I, I think we can build up certain milestones in our faith. Salvation. Yeah. When or, I get saved. Or baptism or, ba- or yeah. you know, uh, a, a mission trip or or leading someone to Christ or whatever it is, whatever the first is. <coughs> um. I think you can build that that up to be like, oh well, I'm gonna have have reached the the, you know the the level then you mm-hmm. know, and it that's it's not true even in your even in your faith journey it's it's you have to learn how to find fulfillment in the day to day prayers the day to day reading of your scripture the 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 day to day just talking about your faith with other people, those are the things you've got to be fulfilled in. And really, that's when you, that's when life really changes and you do hit the end-all, be-all, so to speak, is to when you realize there's not an end-all, be-all and day-to-day life is, is really what life is about. And then you realize, man, now I've now I have found it and life is so much better when I think when you can look forward to the day when you can wake up and say man I'm excited about today I want to go see what what today has for me and not what not whatever work has for you or whatever work may be what you've got that day but be excited about the people you're going to encounter and the interactions you're going to have through that day and don't worry about whatever tomorrow brings or be I mean I don't I would almost go as far to say don't get excited about things that are coming up just because then you're you're so excited about that when it comes it's not going to be what you thought it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And, and you're probably missing out on the fullness of whatever days you have leading up to that. Yeah. That thing. I I did that in seal training. I I I missed out on the fullness of what that experience was. And I look back on buds now and I say, wow, that was the best time in my life. And I just rushed through it. Mm-hmm. I just rushed through it because all I could think about was graduation day. 
you know, and I, I'll never get that back. I can't go do that again. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, that it's a corny saying, but it's really true. The, the journey is the destination. So like the journey through life is really where you want to be. You want to always be on the journey and never feel like you have reached this goal. And then because it's, yeah, it's always going to let you down. Yeah. Well, in the, in the, when you talk about needing to find fulfillment in the day to day, that's pretty much undeniably true. But if everybody listening is not already thinking, well, how, <laughs> you know, cause it, it's still hard to outline exactly how you do that. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what, that's the million dollar question. And I don't have a great answer for that. I don't, I think obviously everyone's still, you know, that's what you're trying to figure out, but I think it has something to do with taking on something that makes you feel like, like, like a responsibility taking on responsibility, going and missions. It, it is something like that. I mean, it's, it's like something that makes you, that, that you're working towards on the day-to-day. I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. It's the day-to-day, but it's all leading to something that, that I don't know. There's got to be something behind it, I think. Well, I don't know. So I mean... I see that, but then you could also argue then that becomes your main focus subconsciously, and that's the reason you're doing everything. I think, personally, I think the answer, like, I think Ecclesiastes lays this out well. Everything's it, meaningless? Well, <laughs> hevel. <laughs> but it's, uh, it you know, it talks about chasing those things and how you really never find any fulfillment in them, but the things you will find fulfillment is in are pretty, you know, essentially pretty days out, enjoying the sun, enjoying a good meal, enjoying a good conversation, the things that you're never going to get back that day, that moment, if you can be so immersed in that moment that you really enjoy the conversation of a good friend or whatever's going on, that is where the meaning lies. And I can even relate to it with my kids. I've been looking forward to or excited about something that I put that over time with them that evening because I'm excited about what's happening the next day, so I want to get everything ready for it, and that's what I'm thinking about, and I'm not thinking about that evening. But that, that's an example of, I mean, you're responsible. You took on more responsibility when you had your first kid, and then you took on a whole new level when you had your second kid. You know, Well, first when I what, got when married. When you got married, exactly. Yep. Ex- I mean, and even when you had a dog. I mean, it's all yeah. respo- it, it all leads to that. I think there's something to that. And there is something to to having a – it's like uh, some of what we've said, it's almost like we're getting away from having goals, you know, because, oh, well, when, once you accomplish them, it won't fulfill you. Yeah. I think it's when you have goals that are just, you know, tr- trivial, like winning a race. Mm-hmm. That was a trivial goal that I had for a very long time, and it's hard to kind of – do that again because you see that it doesn't fulfill you but having some kind of a goal that's bigger than that yeah i think i think that is still necessary i I see exactly what you're saying you're it it is it is if you want to talk about fulfillment another aspect of fulfillment in life is being part of something that is bigger than you that is extremely important for a human being where can without being uh, you can find that in, in, in many places, but to find that in a, a truly sustainable, uh, um, long-term, uh, way, I find that in my faith. Yeah. Being like fulfilling that being part of something that is bigger than yourself. I find that in my in my ministry and what I do with my life in terms of my faith um you know we talk about a goal here we go, we can go back to Romans and well this is really the ultimate goal leading to fulfillment uh this is in Romans 12 therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices that is the definition of 
being part of something bigger than yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual, this version says, act of worship. Uh, This is NIV. I just looked it up online here. Um, Verse 2, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I think that renewing of your mind is another important aspect, daily renewal of your mind. That's another important aspect, not only of fulfillment, but in achieving that day-to-day satisfaction with life is the continual renewal of your mind. Again, that for me is found in my faith. The renewal of my mind is, is found and is achieved by the reading of God's Word. It literally restores my mind. It is God describes his word as your daily bread. Mm -hmm. And when you come to understand and when you get to a place where you are literally uh, studying this book, the Bible, it becomes clear to you how it is truly your daily bread. It it feeds you and renews and restores your mind on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And I think it it has to be something like that because, like you said, there are uh, plenty of places you can go be a part of something bigger than yourself. Go work for a company. Then you're a part of something bigger than yourself. They're doing something that's bigger than you. If you quit, they'll replace you, and the mission will continue on. That's bigger than you. It's not required of you to be there, but if you want to be a part of it to further the mission – you can help. But what happens when you get fired and you have invested everything you have into that company that's the problem. That's bigger than you. Or what if uh you have invested into ultra running the community and you have this crap happen to where you can't go run anymore? Like what you, what happened to you, you know? I'm not saying that that that's what you did. I'm saying that for other people things can happen. You can get in a car wreck and you can become paralyzed. Anything that you choose to be a part of that's bigger than you on this earth can be taken from you. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with it. It's, I'm not saying don't go be a part of those things. I'm saying don't invest a hundred percent of yourself into it. When I, when I truly break down my life, my faith is really the only thing that I can confidently put, just go full bore on. Yeah. I can just go full bore, full commitment to that. But because of the reasons you just laid out, I can't do that with anything else carnally. Yep. Because it will go away. Yep. It will. 100%. It will go away. But that's why, that's why we stress, that's why, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's why. Faith is so integrated in in all aspects of our life because it is the only thing that we can be 100% confident in. And Scripture even tells us this, and back to Romans chapter 8, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Um, going on... Uh, Paul starts in, in verse 39 or verse, verse 38, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This faith, this aspect of faith is what it, the lack thereof is essentially the root of any and all problems, the lack of of your connection with this. Mm-hmm. It's the root, the the root cause of any and all problems. Yeah. So, I know it's well, it's worth looking into. But when you when you say that, I I can just I've had enough of these conversations. And my own struggles. A, a question to what you just said is, well, 
what it's like what if you want to have faith in that but you you don't understand it like cuz i've i mean th- that that's a you know you tell people well you have to have faith in this it will it will do this for you and they're like well okay you know i but but it doesn't Maybe that doesn't make sense. I don't know. No, it, I, it makes total sense, and I think it's probably a question that some people that are listening to this show are are, are asking that well, question. Like I said, right it now. makes sense to me. I mean, yeah. no, it makes total sense to me. Um, I must believe that if this is if this that we're talking about in terms of faith and Christ and who He is and the promises and the gifts that He has for you. I must believe that if you get to a point where you truly want that and you truly seek that, you, you, you ask, you seek, you knock, you, you dedicate yourself to engaging that, I must believe that Christ will reveal himself to you. Yeah. Um, now it doesn't mean it's going to happen the first night. It it, it it may be a journey of of multiple years, but I I must believe that Christ is faithful to reveal Himself to you, um, because He because I know your Creator created you, He knows you, and He loves you in spite of whatever you've done. In the past, so I have to have faith that that's the case. Yeah, that's very interesting because that's what I've been studying too, and even in Romans, is just the whole idea of faith and salvation. It's very complicated to me, and I don't think it is to to other people necessarily, but I'm sure it is to a, a good amount. It, it's very, I, it, you know, essentially what you all these words just get conflated, and, and it's hard to even keep track of belief, faith, everything, but. You know, when you talk about sola gratia, sola fide, that basically means by grace alone, now I say the words wrong, but by grace alone, through faith alone. Mm-hmm. That, that's what that means. So totally, totally makes sense to me, right? Uh, fa- uh, by grace alone. By nothing but the grace of God are we allowed, essentially allowed to be saved. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that... that you know, that that clicks. Like, essentially, that means there's nothing I can do. I cannot save myself. That's not hard for me to recognize. But through faith alone, then you get in the question of, okay, so, so it is c- kind of like up to me to have the faith that I need. Uh, well, to, I think it's up for you, up to you to seek that. It, that that's that's the thing, and free and, will. And well, that's what I was, you know, in Mark nine twenty four, it says immediately the father of the child cried out and you'd have to know the context, but, uh, and said, I believe help my unbelief. He actually said that Yeah, he prayed to help his unbelief. And I mean, I connect with that just from my 22 years. Like I understand, I, I feel like I kind of understand what he's asking. He's like, I can't even do this on my own. Like, I just, I need you to help me. Like, like you said, you're seeking for it. There's something to seeking for it, and what you said, free will. You know, a lot of people debate whether we have free will because of Romans, because of Paul talking about predestination. Yeah, it's very. It, once again, that that's that's part of what I'm saying is complex about this issue, and I don't want to get into the weeds here too too much. But yeah, I just essentially when you said that about needing that faith aspect, it just hit me that I think there's some people that listen that don't have that and maybe want it, but like can't connect it, mm-hmm. you know, can't, it can't click. They don't feel like they have it or the, I don't know. And, and that resonates with me. Um, that's why I brought it up. Cause like, I feel like you, I'd like to help those people not just hear, Oh, you got to have faith be like, no, here's, here's some things you can do. Here's, you know, here's why that's uh, difficult or mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, you know, I think, um, I think you you mentioned something that Jordan Peterson said earlier, and I think that 
Jordan Peterson is a – Oh, the clean your room example? Well, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. But I, I think that he, if you know anything about this man, he's a wonderful example of, uh, in a way, uh, he's a wonderful example that gives context to the the conversation that we're having right now because I believe he is someone who is – uh, who has spent a lot of time doing what we're talking about doing, essentially seeking um, the truth about Christ, I think is is for him. Uh, and you know i've I've seen some uh, some people have sent me clips of him where he has it sounds like he's he's come to the logical conclusion. That Christ is who he said he is, but he can't reconcile with it because he doesn't know what he 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 doesn't he doesn't know what he's gonna do with that. <laughs> if if he reconciles with that, the even the logic that he's found, he don't know what he's gonna do with it, and, and so. You know that's a that's a whole nother level because when you do, when you do determine, okay. That when when Christ reveals, this is what I mean when Christ reveals Himself to you, when you are un- able to understand, wow, He is who He said He is. Mm-hmm. Well, that. That's given to you, right? Christ, that's Christ revealing himself to you. But then you got to do something with that. You got to reconcile with mm-hmm. that because that changes everything about how you see reality. Yeah. And it seems like that's the step that this guy can't overcome. Well, but now I don't know him personally. This is I don't just either. from things people have have sent me. I don't either and it's 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 amazing how open he is with it. I I mean Well, and I brought him up. I brought up that example cuz it pertain to what we were saying and and because i i mean i don't know him but i like his talks a lot i mean i think it's there's a lot of value in it and and i like i like this i like honest discourse yeah and that's what he's really good at going on platforms and and talking to people and talking to atheists you know and debating them you know and he doesn't he's not a christian right but he's vehemently against atheism and it I, I, like you said i think he's in a place where he's struggling with that faith and like i said i totally get that i mean it's it's not like this or maybe it is to some people but it's not a straightforward thing to me where it's like you just woke up one day and i don't know i, I think i think what you said is pretty accurate of how he's he thinks about it so then i think my question for that and for other people who may be in a similar position is what it's almost like that, uh, help my own belief back to that, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like I can't have the faith that I need on my own. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like, that's essentially what I think is I can't, you know, by grace alone through faith alone. It's like, I need help. Not only do I need the grace, I need help with the faith too. Like I need, you know, it's, I'm not capable on my own. This this made me what you said made me think of this. I found it. It's a quote by R. C. Sproul. It says, God himself supplies the necessary condition to come to Jesus. That's why it is sola gratia, by grace alone that we are saved. Mm-hmm. And so like yeah. Jordan Peterson, for example, it sounds like God supplied the condition that he needed to come to know Jesus. He gets that. He understands it, but now it's up to him. So the the condition was supplied, and he recognizes it, but he's chosen to disregard it. Basically, by you know going off what you say, I don't know nothing about the and, guy. And but. what a scary what a, what a scary thing for a person too to to be to be that intellectual and to think that much about life itself or a reality or whatever. How scary is it to to come to a conclusion that then if you accept the conclusion you've come to changes 
everything about the way you have seen or understood life. I mean, that's freaking, yeah, that's, that's, that's tough to reconcile with, man. Yeah. Um, but well, we've been going for about an hour and 10 minutes now. I guess we better shut this <laughs> unit down. You want to go buy a bow, Chili? Yeah. You're about a month, but we, we owe you about a month back pay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because well. he wouldn't come down and get his dang money. We yeah. might need to cash a check and go buy a bow. He You're, was so scared about um, catching dirt and sickness, he wouldn't come down Oh, here. don't get me started. No, that was Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll buy one. We need to go take a gander at him and see what he's got. I'll buy some targets if you'll get you a bow. I got a good target back here. Killing grass. My bow shoots through that thing. I got a deer target at the house. That's why I want to buy us a deer. I got one. A pig, a pronghorn. I want an elk. You want to get an elk? No, I don't want an elk. (laughs) Don't worry about the deer. I got that. All right. Yeah, I want to get us a bunch of 3D targets and set them up, build us out a little course in the woods that we can go shoot. Maybe we'll have you, some of you guys come out and shoot with us sometime. That'd be awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the uh, conversation. Uh, if you did, if you got anything out of it, please share it. It helps us tremendously. And um, that's the way the show grows because we don't, we again, we don't market or spend money on advertising. It's uh, It's simply an exchange that you guys have to help us out with. And um, we love hearing from you guys. We love hearing feedback. And um, just we appreciate you listening and all your support, especially the members on Patreon. Enough said.